Hello everybody, it's Tim here again here another movie review and don't mind the blue stuff on my lip right there I was eating candy right before I did this, but I recently just saw the Batman I gotta say really enjoyed it. This film is definitely not gonna be for everybody and it isn't flawless Um, From this is keep in mind. This is my personal opinion. Just like everybody else's reviews. This film isn't flawless This is not the best Batman film, but it's one of the best um, I would give this a four out of four uh, ranking wise. This is almost as good as Dark Knight Rises, which I know some people don't like just because it's not on the level of, of the Dark Knight. But truthfully, that's still like a masterpiece of a film. Um, this is almost on the level of Dark Knight Rises, truthfully. It's not as good as Batman Begins or Dark Knight. It has moments and parts where it is as good. But as a whole, it's about as good as Dark Knight Rises. Close. I would say that I like the three Nolan movies better than this. The Dark Knight's far better than this film. I'll just go ahead and say it. It is. And Batman Begins is somewhat better than this film. And this film is per honestly about on the level of Dark Knight Rises uh, in terms of a whole. Um, it's an it's an awesome film. It has moments in it. Like it, this movie's uh, highs are probably... Well, I would say overall this movie's better written than Dark Knight Rises, but the Dark Knight Rises like high moments are probably are, are better than this one. But yeah, this is the fourth best Batman film in my opinion after those three. The action in this film is not as good uh, as like... Um, as Zack Snyder's films. It's slightly better than the Nolan trilogy, though. Uh, there's not a lot of action in this film. It's three hours long. Um, it's very long. If you filled the time, too. But the performances are really good. Robert Pattinson, I will go ahead and say it, is great in this film as, like, a detective Batman. You can see why they casted Pattinson in the role, why Matt Reeves did. Uh, he goes for, like, a whole... This is Matt Reeves' vision for Batman. Like, this feels less like a superhero Batman movie. Even more... This is even more grounded than the Nolan trilogy, really. This feels much more like a dark, dramatic crime uh, thriller, really, uh, like The Godfather, fused with uh, the Zodiac Killer with the Riddler. Pretty much you got the Riddler going around Gotham, and Gotham is like in the worst shape ever in this movie compared to any of the other ones, where it's like really film the wires too, where Robert Pattinson's like narrating a lot of the movie. He's, he gives a great performance, a very subdued performance. I can see some people not liking it. He's very like quiet in this film when he speaks and stuff. There's only like one or two moments where he really flies off. For the most part, he's really quiet. I can see some people maybe not liking that, where he doesn't you know, emote that much throughout the film. And as Bruce Wayne, he's also still dark and depressed. His Bruce Wayne uh, was much closer to like the Michael Keaton Bruce Wayne, except even more like dark and depressed. Even though the Michael Keaton Bruce Wayne like did uh, talk and mingle and stuff, at the same time, he was much more of a, a, a recluse who just tried to stay out of the public eye. That's pretty much what this Bruce Wayne is. And you find out his father like um, helped uh, Carmine Falcone, played by John Turturro in the movie, and when he got shot and basically stitched him back up and helped him and saved him, saved his life. And then later on in the movie, um, you find out that um, Carmine Falcone, uh, Thomas Wayne, Bruce Wayne's father, actually went to him and wanted him to do a favor for him to get this guy to knock it off who was trying to take, like, pictures or he had information on Thomas and Martha Wayne's like family history and all that of like how she was like in and out of Arkham Asylum and things like that and um, her like partially being crazy and everything and he was gonna like expose it and um, pretty much Thomas Wayne wanted Carmine Falcone and John Turturro to do him a favor to get this guy to quit talking or to stop but uh, he took it as just killing him so he did uh, but you find out later, of course, that was meant to be... He he wasn't supposed to kill him, but he actually did because he wanted leverage over his father. But that's where you get into some of the holes here in this story because Thomas Wayne should have been smart enough to know that uh, John Turturro's character being a mobster would obviously have killed this guy. I mean, that's pretty obvious. Um, the Riddler in the film is great. He just pops like in and out of the plot. Like I said, though, this film is like really long. There, because it's so long, most of the plot is not actually about Batman. It's more about like the city, and that's another thing here, which some people may not like, is the plot is not really about Batman. He's not really like the driving force here. The Riddler's more of the driving force of the plot, but there are parts of the movie, like chunks, where he just kind of disappears, and it becomes more about just exploring the Gotham's underworld and underbelly, trying to solve the mystery that the Riddler has put forth. Um... And that's when you run into, like, John Turturro's character and all that. Great dramatic acting by, acting by Robert Pattinson. He's great here. Um, I would say he's my second favorite Batman after Ben Affleck, after this movie. Uh, just a great performance. And I, I like, like, his... Uh, he does have, like, a tiny arc in here, but not much. Um, pretty much he wonders, like, how he's affecting the city and all that, whether he's even making a difference. Because the Riddler, you find out, Twist, is actually doing partially all this because he wants Batman to uh, let him join with him, basically let him be his Robin. And he thinks he's doing what Batman is doing by doing vengeance against the city. So, yeah, it, it's a really cool plot. It's a really cool, like, twist in the plot and everything. It works really well in the movie. 
And um, like uh, when the, the Riddler actually confronts Batman or when Batman confronts the Riddler and all that, it's very well done. It's a, it's a great, just um, um, intense sequence. Robert Pattinson's acting is really well handled there. Very, uh, very well acted for what they're going for with the movie here. Uh, the the guy who plays the Riddler, Paul Dano, does a great job at being creepy and stuff like that. I never really paid that much attention to this actor, but now I'm still going to start going to. I know he's in the movie Prisoners. He's delivered good performances before. He's great here. Uh, this is a really good performance um, as the Riddler here. Much more of a Zodiac killer type of Riddler who's just like a crazy guy who's really unhinged and striking back at the city. He like grew up in the orphanage as an orphan and rats were like chewing on his fingers and shit. So he wants to pretty much destroy the corruption in the city and he's taking everybody out. And the Riddler pretty much uh, shoots Carmine Falcone at the end of the movie uh, or towards the end of the movie for the third act. And then he allows himself to get captured and you get that scene where he's got, you see in the trailer where he's got like a question mark in his coffee and they're taking him in. And of course that's when he talks to Batman and um Pattison thinks that he knows who he is because he keeps mentioning Bruce Wayne, but he actually doesn't. He wants to kill Bruce Wayne because he also wants to um, punish Bruce Wayne for the crimes of his parents and all that for like being corrupt. So he's taking everything to the extreme pretty much. And I, I did like this plot point where the Riddler was like having influencers from like the internet who were inspired by him. And the Riddler, of course, is inspired by Batman. So they want to join forces with him. And at the end of it, they're carrying out the plan where the Riddler is locked in Arkham. And uh, they're blowing up the whole city or whatever, causing a massive flood, which was a really cool action sequence. This film, like I said, is much more grounded. It's not as, like, epic as the Nolan films where the whole city is going to, like, blow up and shit. Like, at the end of the movie, you got a uh, Batman who shows up there to this building who he has to save, like, a big group of people or whatever because the electricity is going to, like, fall down into the water and shock everybody to death. Really cool action scenes, though, um, when you get to this climax here and him fighting everybody. He does lose his cool and one of them's fighting Catwoman. Zoe Kravitz does a, a good job here as Catwoman, but she doesn't really bring anything new to the role. I mean, she's good and solid, but I still like Anne Hathaway better. And honestly, Michelle Pfeiffer is probably the most interesting characterization of Catwoman and probably the best in terms of interesting. Um, but that was much more of a Tim Burton character. Anne Hathaway is much more of the comic book character in live action. This one is good. It just doesn't offer like a, a lot new to the role or anything. Uh, Colin Farrell as Penguin is amazing. Uh, easily the best acting in the movie because you literally cannot tell it's him. Uh, that part, uh, he's like almost Oscar worthy with this performance, man. Like you cannot tell it's Colin Farrell. Um, Joker has a cameo at the end of the movie. Uh, I forgot the actor's name is playing the Joker. It's the dude from the Eternals. Um, I mean, he wasn't very good in the Eternals. Here, for his cameo, he's fine. You don't really see his face. He's kind of like hidden in silhouette or whatever behind a, a door in Arkham Asylum after the Riddler's been captured. And he's like talking to him after Batman has uh, saved a bunch of people. And he's talking to him and he's like, oh, don't feel bad. Uh, <laughs> we can be friends. And he starts laughing or whatever. And he tells like a riddle to the Riddler to make him like him or get him to like him. And it's, it's a, it's a good scene. His acting in that scene, we don't really see him. It's just kind of a cameo. You just get like kind of like a silhouette of him and laughing and stuff. He's good. He's fine. Um, I need to see more of him, but so far he's fine. Um, you get to the end of the movie and Catwoman decides to like leave the city. And that's another thing, like, uh, for most of the movie, Catwoman and Batman are just kind of forced to be like unlikely allies. But towards the end of the movie, or I keep saying towards the end of the movie, but it's because it's so long, but it's actually the third act. They start trying to throw in a romance. It really just seems to kind of come out of nowhere. Like all at once, Zoe Kravitz just like kissing on him. And it just kind of comes really out of nowhere. Um, you don't totally buy it. Um, at the end of the movie though, uh, she just takes off to leave the city because she's the, she views the city as not being able to be saved and he wants to stay and actually save it. There's some really cool scenes here uh, that you probably see in the trailer where Batman's like trying to help people, but they still don't trust him because this is Batman's only been Batman for like two years. And that's another thing, the, because this is like the, the eighth or ninth Batman movie, some things are just left for us to assume. Like Alfred gets blown up by the Riddler at one point. He doesn't actually die, but he gets hit by the shockwave of the blast and ends up in the hospital. And we're supposed to just care about Alfred because traditionally we know Alfred raised Batman. So that's it. Like Andy Serkis is barely in this film. Um, and then he, um, when it gets to um, the climax or whatever, though, you get this really cool scene where Batman is like trying to help people and all that, but they won't take his hand. Then this one like person does and everybody else starts doing it. And he's like leading them with a flare. Beautiful visual in like the darkness and all that through the water. That was great. So people are finally starting to trust him by the end of this film and starting to turn around on him. You get the idea that he's that this is like an almost an origin story for Batman, even though he still has been Batman for like two years. This is still like past since Batman begins. And that by the end of the trilogy or maybe the second movie, he's going to be much more of the traditional Batman. Um, he doesn't kill people in the movie either. Um, that just kind of comes out towards the, the third act. <clears throat> 
but he does beat the hell out of people. He's very violent as Batman. You get to uh, another scene that I really like, like one of the Riddler's like henchmen or whatever at the end of the movie, who's one of the people that's rallied around him is like trying to kill Catwoman, and Batman like flies off after he's been shot with a shotgun, starts beating the hell out of the dude and almost kills him. And then when he's pulled off of him, they pull the uh, mask off of him. They're like, "Who are you?" And he goes, "I'm vengeance," just like what Batman said. So Batman has like inspired all these like people to take vengeance into their own hands and stuff, but in like a much more psychotic way, which is not what he wanted to do. But at the end of the movie, though, you get the idea that he's also inspiring people to do good. All in all, yeah, it ends uh, fine. This will get a sequel and most likely a third film as well. So this will be the new Batman. We're going to get uh, Michael Keaton taking over for Ben Affleck in the Flash movie. And Ben Affleck's send-off will be the Flash movie, which I'm fine with that. He doesn't want to do the role anymore. That's fine. Um, Michael Keaton, though, I'm not sure what they're going to do with that. I guess he's going to be like a mentor for Batgirl, and, and she's going to take over the mantle. And in terms of the DCEU film universe, Batgirl is going to be like the main version of the Bat family hero. And Pattinson is going to be the main version of Batman in these Elseworld movies. I don't really like that. I would prefer just to like have, I would just, I would have honestly have just preferred uh, uh, to keep Ben Affleck, just to keep continuity. But for what we got, this is a really enjoyable Batman movie. It's an awesome film. You should see it in theaters if you're a Batman fan. I, I highly recommend it if you're a Batman fan. Like I said, for me, it's my fourth favorite uh, solo Batman movie. If I had to put movies in in order of like the that uh, not like that Batman was in, then I would say I like the Snyder Cut better than this, the Justice League one. But that's a Justice League film. But uh, yeah, this is an awesome Batman film. It's highly recommended. I can't wait to buy it on Blu-ray. I really enjoyed it. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you again.